I am delighted to start off the talks today by introducing Claudio Pisani, who's going to talk to us about operads as double functors. So please, Claudio. Thank you very much. Um, I, first of all, I wish to thank uh, the organizers for the kind invitation <clears throat> and uh, all of you for attending. Um, I'll, um, I'll begin by telling you the story of how I become, became uh, involved in, uh, in double categories. So um, while I was um, while I was studying uh, <clears throat> multi categories, that is uh, colored operas, some uh, some years ago, I felt the need for a more natural approach to 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 operas. And uh, <clears throat> later, I realized that, that um, this. Um, approach could be obtained by combining two ideas that were as were already present that is uh, the first idea is that of uh, considering not the opera itself but uh, the category of uh, family of uh, lists of arrows in in an opera which is uh, the free prop on the opera and the second idea is that uh, of considering instead of uh, uh, natural numbers, uh, in, uh, in, instead of lists, any any indexing for the for the domain of of, of an object. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, so the focus was on these categories whose uh, object were families of object and the uh, arrows uh, are families of of arrows and um, and uh, it is clearly a category of a finite sets and the further structure that is on these categories is the possibility of reindexing arrows not only objects but also arrows and uh, so i began to to meet uh, this uh, word structure which uh, involved two kinds of arrows and uh, some squares and then i realized that, that uh, they were um, nothing but uh, double categories so i begin with um, perhaps the most important example of uh, of an opera the opera of sets whose objects are sets and whose arrows are from a list of sets takes a list of object of of elements and give an element of of the codomain but it's clear that the order doesn't really matter and so we are led to consider instead uh, uh, as the domain uh, families of of uh, sets and uh, a map takes a family of elements to an element of y so i have a picture for this uh, this opera we have a, a family of four sets and uh, we choose a family of element in each set and we get uh, an element y in the codomain it's clear that if i reindex the the family i get uh, another indexing of the sets and of the element but uh, it's uh, always the same map, map. So the <clears throat> the idea is that a bit action give, uh, gives not not only a reindexing of objects, but also of of map in the maps in the opera. Uh, the map F and F prime are uh, we may say that the, they are the same, but uh, they have a different indexing. 
but the index we cannot identify them because the indexing is necessary to compose the error in order to have a well defined domain. So the category which is uh, important to to me to us is uh, the category whose arrows are families of arrows because we can compose you now the families of arrows and uh, uh, this category has an, an underlying factor on finite sets which give the indexing of the object and of the arrows Furthermore, there is, uh, as, I sketched, as I sketched before, we have a um, re-index of families, and, and these are the cells of a double category, as we will see. So the main idea is that uh, in order to, to understand the operands, we need a framework which uh, allows to express the symmetry of arrows but also uh, retains the possibility of composing arrows and the double categories do provide this framework so i um, i now recall the 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 idea of operand and the classical definition of operand before going in the more specific, uh, my view of the of the operands. So uh, we know that uh, in an opera that we have, we have uh, it's like a category, a category, but we have not only unary arrows, but also arrows of any arity. For example, ternary or also nullary uh, arrows. And of course, we can um, compose arrows. We can pl plug um, three arrows in uh, a ternary arrows, and uh, by composing uh, them, we get uh, another arrow. Um, of course, composition is uh, associative, which means that um, at a three like this one can be read in a non not ambiguous way because uh, anyway I compose the arrow in in it uh, I get uh, the same result. Furthermore, in an opera there is also uh, idea of symmetry of arrows. That is, uh, we can uh, exchange the order of the inputs to get another arrow. Uh, the classical idea to formalize this, uh, the classical way to formalize this idea is uh, to, to say that the domain of an arrow is a list of objects that is uh, uh, a set of objects indexed by, by the set N. So we have the x1, x2, and x3. Permut uh, the symmetry is uh, given by an action of permutation of the set N, which give, which uh, act on, uh, on arrows. And the axioms are that, uh, of course, uh, there is a composition, there is uh, uh, associativity. Uh, permutations act on arrows and the action is compatible with composition. If we make uh, these uh, axioms uh, explicit, uh, we see that um, often they assume a rather uh, unwieldy form. For example, uh, there are block permutations and this uh, uh, is a sig signal of the that the skeletal choice may be not the, the right one. Uh, 
but uh, let's see also some uh, some example of, of operand any symmetric monad categories category gives uh, an operand whose uh, arrows of out of uh, um, uh, list are unary arrows out of the tensor product of the list and uh, the advantage advantage of uh, the opera is that we can also restrict to a subset of objects because we don't uh, require that uh, the tensor product uh, do exist in particular we can uh, consider cartesian uh, product as tensors so we get um, again the the opera of sets of the beginning but uh, also interesting is the the um, is uh, when we start with a co-cartesian monoid category because in this case uh, we get um, uh, we get um, the uh, what i called uh, in another paper i called the sequential operand which is uh, i also call it the uh, discrete cocona operands because uh, the arrows are are um, lists of arrows in uh, the category C. If there are qu any questions, uh, you can interrupt me. Um, and also in this case, it's clear that the order doesn't matter, and so will be proper to to use li, um, families indexed by arbitrary arbitrary set instead of lists so what is the idea of no skeletal opera be, before going to the formal definition formal double category definition we give an an a further uh, idea we have uh, uh, we have um, arrows whose domain is an arbitrary family finite finite family of sets of um, objects and um, in order to compose um, um, to take in account account composition we need to consider families of arrows for example, here we are composing the ROG with um, with the family uh, FP FQ. Any family of arrows as an underlying mapping in set. And uh, till now we have that this category which uh, i would call the i will call the 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 category of the opera is um, a category with a functor to to set so to find a set uh, and the factor d we uh, could be called the, the indexing factor because keeps track of the indexing As I said before, this category was already considered, but uh, as far as I know, uh, as far as, as I know, only in, the, in its skeletal form. So the question is, uh, what what the further structure is inherited by 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 this category? from the fact that uh, it comes from an opera uh, this fact uh, this structure is the fact that we can re-index not only objects but also arrows along pullbacks so uh, let's see how this um, uh, can be illustrated we have uh, a for example, a ternary arrow with its underlying map inset. 
we consider a pullback in set like this one uh, and uh, this uh, pullback will uh, will produce uh, a reindexing of f namely f prime which is uh, as i said before the same map but with a different indexing but uh, uh, not only the pullback with uh, bject uh, horizontal side sides but uh, also more general pullback are interesting because i can pick up some of the uh, arrows of the family for example for example considering um, these two family two two arrows family with the underlying map, map, mapping we can consider this pullback which pick up just uh, the object p uh, so that the other part is uh, neglected to get just one of the uh, the arrows in the family with uh, another indexing and the more general maps in, mappings uh, like the subjective one also uh, permit to to copy some of the arrows in the family so we now uh, are going to formalize this but uh, not immediately uh, so what do we get by considering um, uh, families of arrows we have seen that they form a finite um, a category over finite sets and for any pullback there is a reindexing uh, over it and the reindexing is compatible with composition so uh, let's see these points uh, we have a map in d and the corresponding map in the set we can consider any pullback which has these mappings as the right side side and we can re-index the objects x and y following the horizontal side sides of the pullback and we can we get a unique determined map f prime which is over the vertical side left side of this pullback uh, the index is compatible with composition so that uh, this uh, sort of cells can be composed vertically in fact these are, these are the cells of a double category the double category of the operator uh, the horizontal part of this double category is uh, simply the discrete domain vibration on uh, the set of objects while vertical arrows which uh, i mean uh, pro arrows because uh, this is my convention are uh, the maps in D that is families of arrows in uh, in the opera and cells are the reindexing of of uh, families of arrows. So um, finally, uh, how can I express the fact that uh, reindexing give uh, a unique um, object or arrow it is the ex existence of and the uniqueness of reindexing this is ex expressed by using a discrete double fibration this is a notion which is uh, for example in the paper of Lambert and um, is simply the fact that both the, co the, the both the components of the functor d0 and d1 are discrete vibrations uh, 
Esperar arder a Nico este. Uh, but there is one more condition that is uh, important uh, considering in order to have uh, to have something really similar to classical opera that is the gluing condition that is uh, um, if we have uh, two objects recall that uh, objects I mean object objects in the that are family of objects in the opera so if we have two objects over two set a and b that is indexed by a and b we can glue them to form a, a, an object over over um, the sum c of a and b in a unique way such that this uh, object uh, z uh, restri restricts to x and y along injection injections that is a very natural idea idea and similarly we we can um, we should uh, impose a similar condition for arrows that is if i have a, a family of arrows which uh, is over a sum, a sum that is not, is not a single arrow, but it's really a family of arrow. And uh, this, uh, the underlying mapping is a sum in, uh, in the category of arrow of uh, mappings. Then I can glue them to form, uh, in a unique man way, to form an arrow over the sum. this um, this uh, gluing condition uh, assure that um, the horizontal part of uh, the discrete vibration is really the family vibration on O0 and uh, for uh, on the uh, on the side of arrows it assures that um, that uh, a general uh, map in D, vertical and uh, the uh, pro arrow in D, is indeed a, a family of uh, of single arrows, that is of arrows which have uh, as uh, codomine, uh, which have, uh, uh, in which the codomine is uh, indexed by a terminal set. It is a single arrow in our intuition. And so we, we are in a position to state our two lines definition of opera, which is uh, uh, which is simply that uh, an opera is a, a double discrete vibration over pullback in set, satisfying the gluing conditions. Uh, not that uh, we are uh, we are uh, the double category are, are strict and uh, also the double functor is strict uh, this notion is uh, essentially equivalent to the classical one in, in, indeed we can uh, define in the obvious way morphisms of opera that are simply double factor over pullback inset and uh, the this category of um, non skeletal op non skeletal opera operas is equivalent to the class to the category of classical operas just to show the difference of the skeletal, skeletal and non-skeletal approach that consider the 
let us consider the compatibility of uh, permutation permutation actions with composition uh, classically we we have the idea is uh, well illustra illustrated but in the Leinster's book that is we have this sort of uh, block permutation which uh, should which uh, should be considered while in uh, in this approach we we have simply it is simply the fact that we can compose vertically squares in the double category that is um, the composition of the, the re-indexing re is equal to the the re-index of the uh, re-indexing of the composition and uh, all the block permutation are nothing but uh, manifestation of uh, pullback in set in final set that is if you look carefully to, to the picture you see that uh, what is involved with the release is a pullback or more pullbacks. Now we present uh, <clears throat> other other two ways in which uh, we can formulate uh, the notion of uh, non skeletal operand, but we should recall recall some. Uh, some important uh, uh, general facts. Uh, the first is uh, the double Grothendieck Grot correspondence, which says that uh, double discrete vibrations correspond to lux factor from the opposite of the, I mean, the horizontal opposite of the double category A to set uh, i'm following the uh, pare bob pare convention which uh, and they call set uh, set is the category of mappings and spans and um, the other general fact is that um, instead of uh, functor double lux functor from a to set we can consider we can consider normal lux functors from a to cat because cat is uh, is obtained best uh, from span uh, with the monoid construction so this is also a general fact which uh, we can find in the in a paper but uh, by Kratwell and Schumann. So any non skeletal operand, which uh, we have seen is a discrete vibration, give rise to two functors, one in set and one in cat. It remains open the question of to what, what corresponds to the Lewin condition. The green condition corresponds to the fact that uh, this factor f and f prime preserves uh, preserve uh, pragots. I mean pragots uh, uh, in the pullback, uh, in the opposite of the category of pullback. Uh, that is sums in uh, the category of pullback, uh, the double category of pullback. Uh, which are simply a pair of commuting the square squares in which the horizontal arrow are sums. This because uh, set F is uh, ex an extensive category. Summarizing, we have three different uh, but equivalent ways to, to present uh, this uh, notion of uh, operand. Double discrete vibrations with gluing 
or a product preserve index pointers to set or a product preserving normal fu normal functor to get and each definition uh, is best suited to treat uh, some uh, aspects uh, of the operator of course one can be explicit to to say what corresponds to an arrow in these other uh, notion uh, view point of views but it's clear what uh, should be should correspond to a mapping uh, which kind of prof profactor should correspond to a mapping uh, in set uh, and so so I don't uh, go in details now we can um, we can um, see uh, some uh, how the, the language of double categories allows to 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 present some special classes of uh, operands um, I recall that uh, horizontally the these double vibrations are uh, in, a, in a sense are trivial because they are they are forced to be the discrete family vibration on the set O because um, because of the glowing glowing condition or product preserving condition so what is really interesting is the vertical part of the of the of this vibration there are questions um, <clears throat> so the first important uh, case is uh, if uh, is when the vertical part of the of the of D is an anop vibration which um, which is the case case exactly when uh, the category is monoidal because uh, in monoidal but in the sense of uh, Hermida and, Le and Leinster uh, representable multi categories that is uh, tensor products are given by a uh, universal property indeed uh, if uh, if uh, dv is uh, an op vibration we have op cartesian arrows which uh, it's uh, it is easy to see that they are exactly the universal arrows which define tensor products indeed we have uh, uh, if u is uh, cartesian of cartesian for any factorization and f is any other map for any factorization of the corresponding mapping uh, in set we get a factorization in the in uh, in D, which uh, define uh, defines the tensor product of x y x a and x j. Um, the in particular if uh, d is a discrete of vibration not only a vibration but a discrete of vibration we get commutative monoids which in fact are nothing but uh, symmetric uh, discrete symmetric monoidal categories in this case uh, there is a unique uh, arrows out of a uh, family of uh, object unique up to the underlying mapping which give uh, the product of the family uh, there is another interesting way to see this um, to see a commutative monoid in this context 
that is we have a, a discrete fibrillation and the discrete of fibrillation. The discrete fibrillation is the family fibrillation on a set of objects, like the, like always. And uh, the discrete of fibrillation has the same objects of uh, of the discrete fibrillation, and they are compatible. So, what does it mean to be compatible? If I take an if I take a pullback uh, in sets and uh, an object that is a family of objects on A, I can uh, uh, transport it uh, over the using the op vibration and then using the vibration or the other way around that is using the first the vibration and then the op vibration and uh, i should get the same uh, the same result this is another way to to see what is a commutative monoid and uh, this uh, way just presented is equivalent to say that uh, a commutative monoid is nothing but a product preserving strict double functors functor from the opposite of the category of pullback in finite sets to the to the category of square in set Uh, the second important uh, class of uh, of uh, of operands is uh, given uh, by the condition that the vertical part uh, is a vibration instead of a, a, a instead of an op vibration, and um, this corresponds to the fact that O is a sequential operand. That, uh, as I said before, is uh, are those operand whose uh, arrows are uh, families of arrows in a category. What are Cartesian arrows uh, in this case? Cartesian arrows are those cones made up of uh, identities or isomorphisms. And um, it is interesting to to note that um, the, there is a, a, a characterization of uh, sequential operands, which uh, which is in my paper, and um, which uh, involve a central monoid for the operand. But uh, now I realized that this is this central monoid is nothing but. Uh, the monoid of these uh, Cartesian arrows. If I put together these two conditions, that is fibration and op vibration, I get uh, the following coral this corollary. If uh, the vertical part is a bi fibration, then um, the operand is both monoidal and sequential. But being being both monoidal and sequential means that uh, it is a co Cartesian monoidal category category because if uh, if con like these are representable, it means that there is a sum. And this is also a manifest. Um, there is a well-known result that uh, Cartesian monoidal categories ca can be characterized by a copy in the letting um, way among the the monoidal categories. That is, there are there are copy in the letting mappings, but these copy in the letting maps are not in again are not in but but. Uh, the Cartesian arrows of the sequential category, sequential operand. Perhaps this is the right way to note, to note that um, the term uh, 
Cartesian is overworked because uh, it, in, it involved the in, uh, vibrations, monetary categories, uh, and also Cartesian opera, with, which we now consider. So, um, the last uh, class of opera which uh, I wish to consider is that of exponential uh, opera. An opera is exponential exactly when the its uh, the vertical part of D is itself itself exponential as a category of uh, finite sets. That is DV, D, uh, the vertical part is a uh, zero uh, vibration. And um, this uh, kind of vibration uh, include both vibrations and op vibrations, so that both, uh, both uh, symmetrical monadal categories and sequential operand are exponential. Uh, exponential opera, in fact, I have uh, uh, another name, but um, they coincide, coincide with uh, promonoidal symmetric multi categories. Um, so uh, to conclude this part, this part uh, we 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 can also use the other way to 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 consider an opera that is that has lacks double factor and to see what uh, what does it mean for an opera to be monoidal or exponential exponential. If I consider this other point of view, I see we see that. Um, uh, the opera is monoidal if uh, f uh, lands in representable profactors, while it is uh, exponential if uh, if uh, f the vertical part of f is a pseudo factor. So uh, the last uh, part of this talk is uh, is on. Uh, a poss uh, possible generalization generalization of uh, of opera in this sense which uh, is simply to replace set finite set with another base category and the, the first obvious uh, idea is um, to to use set instead of finite set and uh, so we have a notion of infinitary opera uh, in the three ways, uh, in three equivalent ways. For instance, if we start from uh, any category, the family vibration of uh, this category is the vertical part of an infinitary opera. And uh, if C has small, has small sums, then uh, this vibration is, uh, in fact, a bi vibration, so that we can say that uh, it is an infinitary monoidal category. And the isomorphism, isomorphism classes of uh, its isomorphism classes give an infinitary commutative monoid which is, uh, as in this context, as uh, this precise sense. So we have made uh, precise the idea that uh, also infinite uh, sums of our product can be the the can be the category to give uh, a monoid like structure. So um, there is a notion of Cartesian opera, which is uh, which uh, which uh, intended to to to, 
<coughs> captura de, dos ópera de which uh, are, have the same property of uh, Cartesian monetary categories and um, and this uh, this notion can be uh, well uh, studied in the, the present context on a, uh, over any category with uh, s with pullbacks so i i go a little faster because uh, uh, the idea is that one can um, uh, can um, add extra inputs or can contract some of the inputs and graphically we have a diagram like this which give a sort of covariant uh, re-indexing of uh, of arrows and um, there are uh, axioms which are uh, which are pretty obvious perhaps uh, the most interesting is this one which uh, is a sort of combing condition which says that if uh, i re-index an arrow over a mapping and then compose with other arrows uh, i can uh, lift uh, up the the re-indexing uh, over the composition but in the present context uh, uh, these uh, covariant re-indexing are given by, by another type of cell that are triangular cells and uh, there is uh, uh, the possibility of uh, of um, re-indexing uh, in a similar way but uh, of the contravariant re-indexing but now we have this kind of uh, covariant re-indexing so uh, and the combing condition become become a sort of testing condition between uh, square and triangular cells of course there are the other axioms but uh, the point is that uh, in this general context uh, we can define uh, algebraic product uh, and prove that um, that uh, in a cartesian opera uh, it is equivalent uh, the existence of algebraic products or of universal products of or of monoidal uh, product tensor product uh, so it seems that uh, this is indeed uh, a good uh, notion of cartesian opera uh, there is also uh, a property similar to, to to this one that Cartesian and the sequential Cartesian structures on the sequential operates uh, amount to a enrichment in commutative monoids. I skip the fact that also the the, the idea of commuting arrows as a good formulation in this context and uh, for the conclusion uh, there are some ideas that I'm, I'm not uh, I, I begin to think uh, for example the idea of the copper vibration that is a uh, one can prove that split vibration are uh, are nothing but uh, discrete double vibrations in which uh, the factor the double vibration uh, d as companions and uh, and the double vibration preserves companion the double vibration over a square in a category s and also promising is the is to consider bases which are um, more relation like uh, that is uh, for example cospens in set 
but now it's clear that the right squares in the base double category are not the pullbacks but are uh, some man squares there is no difference for extensive categories but uh, in general there is not the same thing so i hope to have shown that um, there are some advantage advantages for example uh, we don't introduce spurious orders and we can uh, exploit the language of double categories to to capture uh, various classes of operands and, um, and we can also usefully uh, generalize uh, the base category so thank you thank you so much let's thank the speaker um and we can now open up to questions. So if anybody has a question, you can either unmute yourselves directly or raise your hand or type it in the chat. And maybe while we wait, I will ask a, a naive question, which is that, um, so when you, when you talked about non-skeletal operads near the beginning, you said that a morphism is a double functor over pullbacks and finite sets, and this lets you show that non-skeletal operads are equivalent to classical operads as a category. Um, but I was wondering, like, so if a morphism is a double functor, is there a nice way of thinking about what double natural transformations are, like some higher structure on this category of non-skeletal operads? Is this something that you can say anything about? uh not yet uh, don't, uh... okay okay that's fine I know um, that it's, uh, an aspect uh, to explore yes okay that's good it's interesting um okay if anybody else has any other questions please feel free Hello, thanks for your interesting talk. Um, I really like how you've sort of got these different ways to present operads, uh, particularly like the indexed one that goes, uh, you know, as, as product preserving uh, functors and so on. Um, when you're talking about change of base, you sort of mentioned how you can replace, you know, finite sets with uh, ordinary sets. Um, I guess this works, I mean, you can replace finite sets with any uh extensive category i suppose and then uh any extensive category with pullbacks and then you can consider the pullbacks in that category and uh it will have the appropriate uh, uh products in the opposite category for you to consider these uh um, product preserving double functors uh, i mean I guess my question is, have you, does this make sense? Can you, can you actually replace finite sets? I mean, the double category of pullbacks in finite sets with the double category of pullbacks in an extensive uh, category. Uh, yes, I think that the extensivity condition is, um, is necessary when you, you, you you want to have the equivalence between uh, uh, discrete double fibrations yep. and the product preserving functors right but in many many development can be done in over any category with the uh, backs yep okay like the okay. discrete fibration point of view yeah right so but the equivalence between these three different formulations that you give is really uh dependent on on which yes because, place yeah yes because in this case we you have that um, that uh, put back some the the sum is um uh, as the aspect of uh, two put back square yeah this is not true in general and so okay 
Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any more questions? Okay, in that case, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much, Claudio.